yet another very lovely evening out there to all of you, my dearest of friends. We left off in Ezekiel 26, starting with the prophecies against Tyre. Let's get right into it. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am a perfect beauty. Much like Corinth in the days of Paul the Apostle, Tyre was a, or still is even, a port city. And here would have been what the uh, Tyre was like. There would have been the uh, two parts of Tyre, one being the isle off the coast, and then the coast being right here labeled Old Tyre. Verse 4, Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. They have made all thy shipboards of fir trees of Sinir. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make mast for thee. Of the oaks of Bashan have they made thine oars. The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory, brought out of the isles of Chittim. Chittim being Cyprus, located on the isle, the much larger isle. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy cell. Blue and purple from the isles of Elisha was that which covered thee. The inhabitants of Zidon, which is Sidon, located to the north of Tyre, and Arvad were thy mariners, thy wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee, were thy pilots. The ancients of Gabal and the wise men thereof were in thee like caulkers. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were in thee to occupy thy merchandise. They of Persia and of Lud, now Persia being located over here, which is where Cyrus and all of them would have come from, and of Lud and of Foot were in thine army. Thy men of war, they hang the shield and helmet in thee. They set forth thy comeliness. The men of Arvad with thine army were upon thy walls round about, and the Gamadims were in thy towers. They hang their shields upon thy walls round about. They have made thy beauty perfect. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches, with silver, iron, tin, and lead. They traded in thy affairs, Javon, Tabol, and Meshech. They were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. They of the house of Togarma traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony. As you'll see, just everywhere, they dealt with everyone. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied in thy fairs with emeralds, purple embroidered work, and fine linen and coral and agate. Judah and the land of Israel, they were thy merchants. They traded in thy market wheat and mineth and peneg and honey and oil and balm. Damascus was thy merchant in the multitude of the wares of thy making, for the multitude of all riches in the wine of Helbon. And white wool, Dan also, and Javon, going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs. Bright iron, Cassia, and Calamus were in thy market. Dedan was thy merchant in precious clothes for chariots. Arabia, which would have been looking everywhere, just <laughs> trading with everyone. And all the princes of Kedar, I mean, all this area. This is very important to know as well. Okay, it's not just, uh, Ezekiel's not just naming all of these off. The Lord's not just moving him to name all of these, but it's to show how the whole world is connected with this Tyre. They all dealt with Tyre, just like Babylon and Revelation is known as the whole world. So is Tyre a part of this whore, this whole world dealt with everyone and anyone that came. As long as they had money, they were allowed to participate with Tyre. Tyre was so money hungry. And notice where she's located right above Israel. But to have the knowledge of Tyre being the Old Testament type of spiritual Babylon that we find in Revelation is very important for the next chapter. Arabia and all the princes of Kedar, they occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats. In these were they thy merchants, the merchants of Sheba and Rabbah. 
They were thy merchants. They occupied in thy fairs with chief of all spices and with all precious stones and gold. Haran and Kene and Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Asher and Kilmod, were thy merchants. These were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, embroidered work, and in chests of rich apparel, bound with cords and made of cedar among thy merchandise. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, and thou wast replenished and made very glorious in the midst of the seas. Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters. The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Notice how the seas are mentioned as well. Just as in Revelation, how Babylon and this whore of Babylon sits upon the, the seas are mentioned. And all of this symbolism is found within the Old Testament tire. Thy riches and thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners and thy pilots, thy caulkers and the occupiers of thy merchandise, and all thy men of war that are in thee, and in all thy company which is in the midst of thee shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. The suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of thy pilots. And all that handle the oar, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships. They shall stand upon the land, and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee, and shall cry bitterly, and shall cast up dust upon their heads. They shall wallow themselves in the ashes, because that's their golden goose. The very same thing happens in the, the last days, whenever people look at the marketplace just crumbled. Whenever God destroys the commerce of the land and these people that so does, uh, love their riches, they see all of it just going up in smoke and how it counts for nothing now. And they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee and gird them with sackcloth and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. And in their wailing, they shall take up a lamentation for thee and lament over thee saying, what city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? Sounds so much like the Babylon in Revelation, doesn't it? It's very important to keep this in mind. Verse 33, When thy wares went out of the seas, thou fillest many people. Thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas and the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall. All the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at thee, and their kings shall be sore afraid. They shall be troubled in their countenance. The merchants among the people shall hiss at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt be any more. And Warren Wiersbe and the commentators see this. I mean, you'd have to be blind in, in not seeing this. This great lamentation that the world has for at the fall of Tyre. This great lamentation is an advanced demonstration of what the whole world will do when Satan's system, Babylon the Great, spoken of in Revelation 18 and throughout, Babylon the Great collapses before the Lord returns to establish his kingdom. As one can read in Revelation 18 of these times to come, for in one hour, speaking of Babylon, for in one hour so great riches has come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Babylon. It's the exact same wording as uh, Ezekiel's Tyre. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. 